my ancestors woke me up this morning. They said, son, you do know what time it is, don't you? I said, what time is that? They said, it's war time. So welcome to the war front, brothers and sisters. Uh, we have a story to share with you today. Uh, we uh, think it's an extremely very valuable story for our people to hear. And we're up here in New Jersey with Miss Lorraine Conley, mother of uh, Charles Conley, who um, is a story that we're about to share with our brothers and sisters because we think it's very pertinent for you to hear this situation and story for us to understand the situation as black people we find ourselves in this country. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, Ms. Conley, uh, could you kind of introduce yourself to the people and just let us know a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and, um, and then we'll start discussing a story about your, your son, Mr. Conley. My name is Lorraine Conley. I came in Edison 13 years ago. I work at Brighton Gardens of Edison. I have three children, one daughter, Ronnae Morgan. She's 26. One son, Charles Conley, he's 19. One daughter, Lakeitha Conley, she's 11 years old. My husband is Bernard Johnson and um, could you first start telling us a little bit about your son's background, uh, Charles Conley? When he first came here, he was six years old, he played Shamrocks. He went to Martin Luther King School, from Martin Luther King School. With Shamrocks? Shamrock football team. Okay. Okay, little league football team. He, left, he then left there after Martin Luther King, after fifth grade, and went to John Adams. From John Adams, he went to J.P. Stevens High School. At J.P. Stevens High School, he was very active. He played football all the way up until he was a senior. He got the Most Valuable Player Award two years in a row. He then left there and went to Wesley College and tried to proceed on with his life. And from then on, seven weeks later, he passed away. Now, in terms of him playing football, was that a major part of his life? That was a major part of his life, yes. Was he very successful in his football career? Very successful in his football career. What position did he play in high school? He played uh, quarterback, but he played all other positions too. When he was needed, he filled in. When he went to Wellesley College in Dover, Delaware, did he go there on football scholarship? Yes. Um, how long was it that he was at school in his first year before you got the call that there was a problem? Well, he was there seven weeks. Okay. And then I got, when I got the call, it was that my son was deceased. Yes. Could you tell us who called you and what they told you when they called you? Well, I was at the flea market. And the Edison police came to my house and left a note. My daughter came to get me and my husband to tell us to rush home because the police was coming. The police had left a note. I called Edison Police. They told me on the phone, I'm just calling to let you know that your son has passed away. He had hung himself. In turn, then the police came here at my home. They called Delaware Police Station and spoke to an officer there. Okay. And the police were here and they talked to an officer there. And what yes. did the officer there say? The officer there said that they found Charles Conley hanging from the tree. So in the back of the school. Did they ever show you any pictures of it? I seen the pictures after everything was over, me and my sister. We went down to the police. I requested that I see the pictures. We seen two pictures when we went down to the police station after the situation was over, after the burial and everything was over. How tall was the tree? I mean, it gives a sense, was it was it was it the size human size somebody could jump up into the tree or was he hanging high from a tree? It was human size where somebody can get in the tree. Okay, okay, so it wasn't very high. And he was hanging behind the school, you said? Yes. What made them come to the conclusion from your memory of what they said to you that he hung himself from the tree? It was their own made up conclusion to me. You know, because first of all, when, when they took us in the back, it was a detective and a lady that took us in the back of the school. And the garbage can is too light to hold a heavy body like his. He was about a hundred. He was about two hundred and ten pounds. So they had a. So when they showed the picture, they had a garbage can where they said he stood on. No, top when of they this. took us back there, they that's when they showed us the garbage can. And they said that that garbage can is what he stood on to do it. Yes. In the picture that they showed you of your son, was the garbage can in that picture? No, it was not. 
So the garbage can that they said he stood on to hang himself wasn't in the picture when they showed the picture. No, it wasn't. When the detectives take the picture, they covered half of his body with the white sheet, while the other half you see was hanging from the tree. Did they say why they covered half of his body? No, they didn't. Was there anything in his life uh, from friends or family or anybody that said he was depressed or that that was a possibility? Nothing gave the family uh, any way of thinking that he would kill himself. He had the healthy fear of college, but it was nothing that said he was a happy-go-lucky person. Okay, from talking to his friends, his the football players he was playing with, anybody, you know, did anyone say that they saw signs of something of this nature? No one saw signs. Hmm. Okay, so when you, when the police came and they called you and they told you that, did you believe that your son had taken his own life? I couldn't believe it. Okay. Um, did the police try to give any evidence to prove it, to say, well, this is an indication that he did it himself? Okay. The, only, the only thing they did, they took his, his computer and his phone, and they said the girl was the last person he spoke to. That was it. There was no indication of that. He just said bye to his mother, his sister, and his niece. Okay, so there was just a statement on, was it Facebook or on Facebook? A, saying bye. No Today's explanation speech, no. or anything. If you want to know, Ma, call Jasmine. That was the girlfriend. Did you all question the police? Why do you say that? Why haven't you investigated? We don't think you did it? No, I didn't. I was so upset at the time, I didn't think about questioning her. And I'm assuming, having never heard of, in this area, probably, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, never hearing of anybody being hung from a tree in the area, that it probably sounded more reasonable that he would have done that himself than that some other person would have done that. I don't think you were aware of the fact that in the same uh, city, Dover, Delaware, at least since that, I think you're aware now, that other people have been hung and the police have said that they hung themselves. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Your son, what was he hanging by? Was it a rope? Was it a... Two belts. Were they tied together and then all one or they were from, coming from different sides or if you... Tied together all at one. Okay. Were they his belts? Yes. When was the first time that you became aware that it was possible that he may not have done that? Well, when I looked at the, the website, I realized, you know, as a parent, when you know your child, I know my child wouldn't do anything like that, but you never know at that moment what might happen, you know, and I didn't know until he went there because I was a new parent with a kid going to college. It was all new to me. I now know that it was like a hit time. Okay. Now when you say when you went to the website, what website are you talking about? I'm talking about your website. Okay, the Warner Horizon website. Right. And you saw the story about Henry Fordham where right. he talked about somebody, two guys tried to lynch him. Right. And tried to lynch him with his belt. Right. When you heard that, did that start to make you wonder well, this is very similar to what happened to my well, son. Well, really, me and my family wondered, but I didn't want to. I was so upset. I didn't want to really go no further with it. Because sometimes when you dig into stuff, you can make it more than what it is. You know, me and my family been through a lot. You know, and me standing here, I mean, my body is aching now. But I have to hold my guns because I have to be strong for other things that might come my way. You know, but it's just... Okay, so, and I want to make this point because I think it's very, very important. When it happened, you didn't really have, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but any concept that anything else could have happened except for what they said happened. These are the police. People tend to trust the police. You don't think that the police are going to lie to you, and if they say this is what happened, and you don't have any other thing to go on, then you assume it's what happened. When you see the, the stories that are now coming out of Dover, Delaware, and for people that don't know, um, Wesley College is about five minutes away from the park where John uh, Clark was hung and where Henry Fordham, where they attempted to kill Henry Fordham and uh, lynch him as well. It's about five minutes away. So it's, it's actually five minutes walking distance. So it's very, very close proximity where one brother was found hung and the family has said they have not been able to get pictures yet. 
uh, to see, but they don't believe he hung himself. And since that time, that family, uh, many of the sons in that family have been arrested and things of that nature. So they have never gotten a real story or an investigation for their son. The police just said he did it to himself. And another brother who actually was able to get away was able to say, I wasn't trying to kill myself. Some people tried to kill me, two white males, uh, kidnapped me, and then brought me to this park. And they, they said that they had killed the other brother and hung him and that they was going to hang him the same way they hung the other guy. And so uh, he was able to get away, and we were able to put the story out. And now what we're finding is that in the Dover, Delaware, uh, Maryland area, that there are more and more stories of people whose family members have been murdered and very, or, or have died in very strange uh, circumstances. A very similar type of situation. There were three young Haitian boys. I forget the name of the town. It's right on the border of Delaware. They were between, I think, 8 and 12. And they were found uh, drowned. And the police story is that they all went out. None of them could swim. But the police story is that they all went out into this creek, took their clothes off, and went swimming, and all drowned. The family uh, is saying that they were murdered. And that is a very close proximity to where we see all of these other things occurring. So my question for you now is, now that you're hearing these other accounts of black people who are saying their family members have been killed, very similar to what happened to your son, particularly in Dover, with the basic themes being a hanging from a tree and a belt, are you beginning to wonder and think that maybe your son was killed as opposed to him committing suicide? Yes. And when me and my sister went, we went humbly. I took her because she's very, um, how you say it, she's very educated. And I was humble about it. You know, when you're dealing with somebody else other than your race, and you know what we've been through all through our life, you got to go on a humble note. You can't go on an aggressive note or with an attitude. So when we went, we went very humbly. But I feel that something is going on. I feel, you know, after seeing your story and now knowing about Delaware, because I didn't never live there, I never went down there, knowing about what's going on, I believe that it's something going on. I mean, you know, something is going on where, you know, he might not have, they might have killed my son. Is there anyone uh, who he was close to that felt like there was something strange about that as well, that maybe someone yes, did something? he's on his way. Keith McLean. Okay, he was a friend of your son or yes. family or a on friend. the football team? Okay, a friend. No, he wasn't down there with him. He was here. Okay. But he was a friend of him. They shared every okay. day. Before your son, you got the call about your son uh, uh, passing away. How long had it been since you had spoken to him? Spoken to him the day before twice. And I asked him, did he want me to come to the homecoming? And he said, no, ma, that's okay. I'm good. So you spoke to your son twice the day before they say yes. that he killed himself. Yes. Now, you were his mother from birth, so you've known him from the time he was zero to the time he was 19. Was there anything in retrospect when you talked to him on the phone that sounded strange about his demeanor, strange about the way he was talking? You know, a mother. my mother used to call me sometime when I was depressed out of the blue when I was in college. And is everything okay? And I thought, I don't know why I'm noticed. But I mean, so was there anything you could think of in retrospect where you no, got to feel? I called him. I said, son, you need anything? No, I got everything. You sure you got money in your account? I'm sure I got money in my account. You sure you don't want me and Papa John to come? No, Mom, I'm good. Don't come. Because we was going to go down. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, Mom, I'm good. You don't have to come. I'm good. So he was just cool? He was cool. And once I knew, I went over because the boy lived over there. His mother lived over there. I said, go. I told everybody that came from here, he took five kids with him. I said, go get your kids from Wesley. Now, the day that he was pronounced dead, October the 17th, I had all the parents go and get their kids. 2010? Yes. Okay, now, 